Yo, what is good you guys? Silver386 here. Now, as promised, I'm going to be talking about Tokyo Ghoul Season 1 and Route A. I thought about separating the two, but I figured I would just talk about both, since after all, it's the same series, just different seasons. So then, <sighs> where to begin, where to begin? I suppose Episode 1 would be the best spot, because I'm not gonna lie, I love the way it started off, you know, like, it sort of made you wonder, you know, like, what is this all gonna be about? and everything, and it definitely had a great way of starting off, especially with Kaneki getting attacked by Rize, and that was actually very neat, you know, you're thinking, okay, Kaneki is like a shy kid, you know, he finally gets a date, you know, it's gonna start off like a good series, you know, like, very happy and shit. I kinda didn't expect it to be happy, though, I, I like, I knew something was up, so, basically what happens is is Rize ends up attacking Kaneki and just fucking him up completely and I believe ripping out a couple of his organs or something and that's why he ends up in the hospital but something I want to go ahead and mention now ghouls can regenerate they can do all sorts of shit meanwhile Rize gets wrecked by pipes I mean that's sort of something I found kind of fucked up honestly and I just Oh my god, it just kind of pisses you off after you see how much blood everyone loses in a couple fights and they live. and uh, It just makes you wonder. So anyway, episode 2 through like 8 are extremely kind of slow. Like, there, there's a couple good fights, you know, especially between Nishiki and Kaneki, and he almost killed Hide. And that was an amazing fight, dude. I'm not, I'm not saying it was bad or anything. And then there was the first fight when he met Nishiki and Toka wrecked him completely. Toka just destroyed Nishiki. And that was epic as well. There are some good fights in Tokyo Ghoul. However, I felt like it just took way too long to actually get started. The thing that sort of bothered me was is around episode 4, I believe, he gets his mask. And, you know, you're like, it's mostly talking in that episode. And then episode 8 is like when it finally gets hype. It's a 12 episode anime, 12 or 13, I want to say 12 though. And it takes like 8 episodes for some shit to really get like situated and whatnot. And honestly, there was actually a couple parts to me that just made no fucking sense. In the first episode, Kaneki cannot eat anything normal humans can as it makes him extremely sick. And he also tried to stab himself in the stomach with a kitchen knife, a.k.a. a butcher knife, whatever you want to call it. Let's just call it a kitchen knife or the Michael Myers knife. He tried to stab himself directly in the stomach and the blade bloke, bloke, bruh, the blade broke because a knife cannot penetrate a ghoul's skin or cut it. Meanwhile, Kaneki gets a cut on his index finger from a broken coffee cup. Now, now, piece together that for a minute. A fucking knife that's meant to cut shit can't pierce his skin or cut it. Meanwhile, a coffee cup does. I don't know if it's like a the Holy Grail, maybe, and it broke and it, like, cut him. Uh, that, to me, that just made no fucking sense. And it was just kind of like, plot hole. And, you know, at that point, it just kind of had you like, the fuck is this shit? You know, because it was a key point in the story. You definitely can't be filler, because that's how he met a weird purple hair guy with a suit. I don't remember his name, but he's actually kind of cool. He's cool, but he's weird. So, you know, then everything gets started, you know, when Kaneki gets, like, kidnapped, basically, and completely destroyed. Like, he was getting his face slammed through everything. I, it's miraculous how he fucking lived. And, honestly, it just makes you wonder... Like, how some of the shit got to just slide like it was all good and it made sense. But, I will give Tokyo Ghoul credit for one thing, though. They had one of the best psychological breakdowns I've ever seen in an anime. Seriously, like, that's, it was one of the most best psychological breakdowns I have ever seen of an anime character. So, that's why it's definitely not the worst anime I have seen. It's actually decent to me, and I thought that was an amazing psychological breakdown. What they did in episode 12, if they could just capture what they did, whatever they did, you know, how they made it that amazing, and put it into all of their episodes, it could have been an amazing anime. Now, that's just season one. The final verdict isn't quite over yet, as we have to talk about Route A. Now, season one is just called Tokyo Ghoul. They decided to call it Route A in season two for whatever fucking reason. And 
you know, it starts off immediately after the last episode of Tokyo Ghoul. And that's where they fought the one-eyed owl, even though it's really the coffee shop guy. And that's his father. And that's what you kind of find out. You get a little bit of backstory. Now, basically, thanks to Toka killing one of the uh, doves... And, you know, Amon getting into a fight with her, and then Mato dying because of Toka. That sort of was already red flagging everything. So that was sparking up a lot of shit in the 20th Ward. And shit was getting crazy, which actually led to one of the final firefights in the first season. Because the motherfuckers are getting killed, and, you know, like, hey, we've had enough of this shit. We'll just kill all the ghouls, you know, get all this shit over with. So it was sort of Toka and Kaneki's fault for that first season firefight, what sort of happened. So then it gets even worse because the CCG fucking lost in season one horribly. And man, <laughs> it, it really just because like they thought the one eyed owl was officially back and the one eyed owl hadn't appeared in I think 10, maybe 20 years. So, you know, of course, I had the CCG worried. So they started up the war in Route A. Now, Route A, basically, you already know the war was kind of starting episode like three or four on up and it basically just shows how Kaneki ends up going to Algiri, and you don't find out why at first, and it pisses you off, because it's like, by the way, I know I told your brother that he was a bad guy, because he works for Algiri, but guess where I'm going, you know, how fucking giddy, you know, and it kind of pisses you off, because it's like, okay, no fucking insight as to why, till like, ten episodes later, you know, it, it kind of pisses you the fuck off, because it's like, you know, you couldn't have gave like a little hint, and then, you know, Kaneki does finally show up, and now he's all edgy, and he always cracks his finger like this to uh, mimic fucking Yamuri. And it just kind of pisses you off. It's like, yo, you just kind of finessed his little finger trick, you know, where he breaks his knuckles. And I'm like, I get that Kaneki went through, like, a psychological thing, but it doesn't mean he has to become a sociopath douchebag. I mean, it literally makes no sense. And if anything, Kaneki is the one to blame for the whole fucking war that happens in Rude, because he started killing a lot of shit and helping Algiri, where he was murdering people 24 fucking 7. Nice job, Kaneki. You, you clearly started up the war and you got a bunch of your friends killed, dude. Great. Great job. Hey, what? Yeah, <laughs> hey, what's up, Dre? By the way, Dre, uh, actually, I don't want to spoil it, this until the end of the video. I actually got something I got to tell you guys uh, when it happens. But anyway, so what happens at this point is Kaneki, you find out, oh, well, I only became super edgy so I could get stronger and fight the CCG. I'm like, well, you wouldn't have to fight him if you weren't a pretentious douchebag who started up a fucking war. Nice job and great logic there, Kaneki. But, uh, you know, honestly, it, the, the series just pissed me off after a while. Um, I'd have to give Tokyo Ghoul either between a 4 and a 6. Honestly, there's way too many plot holes, and it, it just kind of pissed me off, honestly. It took way too long to actually get started. So, to those of you that are Tokyo Ghoul fans, take, don't take this to any offense. However, I'm sorry, I just, I think it was way overhyped. It did not live up to its potential at all. Honestly, the psychological breakdown is about all I can say. The war was short-lived, too. Like, only ten people died. You're telling me out of, like, a whole war, only ten people died? Come on, now. Like, that's... Just, no. I'm sorry, but I'll, I'll have to give Tokyo Ghoul a solid five, maybe. So, that's that's all I gotta say. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this review. See ya.